Right, so uh, at this particular point, the sort of next thing we need to do really is start sort of populating the sort of the widgets uh, that will sort of house the actual text uh, for the conversation. So we've already got the main dialogue uh, sort of section as it were, but before we do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and create the buttons that would, would sort of display to show the different options the player's got. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one a W underscore a dialogue option. And we can go ahead and open that one up. So, so the next few steps is kind of just me setting up the visual look of things. Uh, generally it's up to you how it is you want to do it. So I'm just going to start by adding a size box uh, and I'm going to just add a height override of about 80. So that'll just be the sort of the height of the actual options button uh, how it's presented. Uh, the next thing I'm going to add an overlay and then an image, uh, an image to that overlay. And I'm going to set that image to fill both horizontally and vertically. So the next thing to do is just to sort of set the colour. So I'm going to go for sort of a darkish colour. Um, uh, not probably not too. And then I'll stick a bit of a bit of alpha on there as well. Yet again, in terms of the visual look of the button, it's completely up to you how it is you want to uh, assemble that. Um, so with that done, I'm going to go ahead and just name this particular image, so image underscore background. Uh, and then we'll add a horizontal box. And what I'm going to do as well is just add another image to this one. And make sure it's aligned to the left and filled vertically. And I'm going to leave that white, but under the brush, I'm going to set the X to a four. Okay. Additionally, I'm just going to change the alignment for the horizontal box so it's filling vertically. So this particular button is going to have a left edge on it, just so it's a bit easier to distinguish that it's a button. Well, I think it does anyway. <laughs> um, this itself doesn't need to be changed or anything like that, so I'm just going to disable the is variable on that, just so it doesn't show in the variable list. And then we'll go ahead and add some text. Make sure that's centered. And then I'm going to pop some padding on the left side of that as well and to the right side. Okay. Uh, what you can also do uh, when you're trying to see what it looks like visually, oh, you know the top right here where it says full screen, if you click and uh, change that to desired on screen it will show you what it looks like if it's kind of like, um, yeah, if it's only occupying the space that it's uh, that it needs. Uh, which can be quite useful just to see how it uh, how to look. Uh, so let's have a quick check here, so we can change the text. So um, this is a sample option. So it sort of gives you some idea of how that would look. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and clear this just so it's empty. And then the last thing we want to do is actually add a button and this needs to be added to the overlay and that needs to be set to filled uh, both uh, horizontally and vertically so this particular button I don't actually want it to be visible so under the background colour I'm going to set the alpha all the way to zero so the button itself is still there uh, so it'll still function it's just visually to the player it's not going to be, be seen uh, I'm then just going to go ahead and change the name, so that's btm underscore option, like so, and then we can compile and save that out. Okay, and then what I want to do is 
go into the uh, graph view uh, so we can start adding some some things into here so the first thing I want to do is actually add a reference to the the actual dialogue uh, component that we're using so when this button is clicked we know where to send information to regarding the actual button press so I'm just going to create a new variable call this one owning uh, dialog component and you want to set that to the uh, dialog base okay uh, just look at the variable list there so we are missing the one for the text uh, Okay, yeah, so we just need to set that to is a variable as well. So quickly give that a name. Uh, text underscore option name. And that should then show in the list. Yep, lovely. Right then, so what we're then going to do is add three new variables. Uh, the first one is going to be type text. I'm just going to call that one option text. And then the second one that's going to be called option index. And that's going to be a type integer. And then the final one that's going to be called dialog index, and that's going to be type integer as well. Okay, so with that done, what we then do is come to the main event graph and want to add an event and we want to add the event construct. So the event construct is called when the widget is first created. Um, and what we then want to do is grab the text name and we want to set the text to the option text. Like so. So when this is first created, it will go ahead and just set the text um, to whatever we pass to it. And uh, what we do need to do, however, is just make sure the option text is instance editable and exposed on spawn. Uh, and we also want to go ahead and do that to the uh, two integers there as well. So the option index and the uh, dialog index as well. Okay, so so with that, uh, with the expose on spawn, then that just means when we actually go to create this particular widget, it will give us the option to populate those variables when we first create it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just set up a few things just regarding the hover states. So if you click on the button underscore option, under the event section on the left hand side, there should be two for hovered and unhovered. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those two. Like so. So for the hovered, we want to grab the image background and then want to set the color. Oh. Want to set the color and opacity. So with the set color, uh, so this is the color when it's hovered. I'm just going to grab the main colour we've got for the background just so I can modify that. Grab the hex value. And then I'm just going to alter this a little bit. So I'm uh, so going to make it lighter grey. So 0.4. Give that a, a go. And then we can just copy that, bring it down to the unhovered. And then we want to make sure that gets set back to the original grey colour, uh, which I've lost already. There we go. So copy and paste that again. So when we hover over the button, uh, it'll set it to a light white. And then when we unhover, it'll set it back to the normal uh, grey colour. Uh, the next thing we want to do is set the text color as well so we've grabbed that into there and then we can do set uh, color and opacity again uh, 
Uh, this time the colour value itself is a little bit different, so we do need to use a, a make slate colour instead. Uh, but other than that, it's uh, sort of the same setup as what we're doing here. So what I am going to do, however, is just alternate the colours. So for the white colour, that's the text that we want on its unhovered state. Uh, just so it can be seen, uh, which reminds me, uh, I will need to actually set the colour in here as well, uh, just so it matches, uh, but without the alpha, I believe. And then we can just do the same for the grey as well. Yep, so that's the that's the over uh, the sorry the hover state set up. Uh, lastly, last thing I want to do is on the button is actually add an unreleased event, and this is what's going to update uh, the option that's been picked. So I'm grabbing the reference to the uh, owning dialog component, uh, and then we call the update uh, selected option function. So that's one of the functions we created earlier. Uh, we do just need to make sure that the owning dialog component is also instance editable and exposed on spawn as well. So quickly do that. And at this point, it's just a case of connecting up the option index and the dialog index. So option index at the bottom, and the dialog index connected to the progress index, like so. Okay. So in terms of the uh, dialog option. That uh, should all be complete. Uh, so, at which point we can then start populating the sort of the main dialog uh, widget. Okay, yeah. So, with this particular one, yet again, uh, I'm just going to quickly go through and set set it all visually. Um, again, in terms of how you want this to look, it's completely up to you. You can do it however you want. So, I'm going to start off by adding a canvas panel. Uh, this just allows us to place elements at a very specific location on the screen. Yet again, depending on how it is, you actually want to show this and that could affect um, how it is you actually set up uh, set this particular thing up so with the canvas panel added I'm going to then add a, a vertical box to it and then inside the vertical box I am then going to add an overlay and then inside the overlay, I'm going to add an image. Okay, and then we'll add a vertical box to the overlay. And then lastly, we want to add another vertical box to the vertical box. Right. Sorry, the vertical box once added to is the very first one. Um, okay, and then it's just a case of adding the text boxes. Like so. So we're hopefully about to see the uh, the layout there. So I'm going to go ahead and name some of these. So the first text box that's at the top, I'm going to go ahead and set that it is a variable. And I'm going to call this one text underscore speaker. The next one, I can do the same thing, set is variable and call this one uh, text underscore uh, dialogue. Like so. And then the vertical box at the bottom, I want that to be a variable as well. I'm going to call this one options container. So this is uh, essentially where we will place any of the options buttons that we uh, sort of create, they'll get placed inside of here. So because this is a vertical box, the buttons will be placed vertically, so they'll get stacked on top of each other, well, below each other. If you're wanting to have it where the options are horizontal instead, you could just switch this out for a horizontal box. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's completely up to you how it is you want to uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to just set up the image so I don't want that to be a variable but I do want to set the colour so I'm just going to grab the colour I got from here just so they, they match again if you want them different colours you can do that 
Um, and then we want to make sure that's fill. Um, on the vertical box that's on the canvas panel, we want to make sure that's size to container. Uh, sorry, uh, size to content. So it's looking okay there. And then I'm going to go ahead and set some of the anchors. So at the moment, uh, with it selected, you see that little flower pattern at the top. So that's at the top left corner. Uh, that's essentially where it's anchored. So if you were to change like the X and Y position, it's based on from that particular point. So if I was to go ahead and check the anchor to the left hand side of the screen, uh, we can then adjust these, the X and Y position to get it to look where we want it to. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of padding on there, just to move it away from the left hand side. And then what I'm going to do is move it up. So it's minus. It's quite high. So, uh, so something like that. So it'll always sort of start at the top, sort of right position. Uh, just to make this a bit easier to see when we're testing, I'm just going to call this one a character. And then this one's going to be called. Uh, well, it's dialogue essentially, so um, some yeah, so just pop some sample text in there just so you can see how it looks. So, as you can see, with this sort of long string of uh, text that's in there, it, it kind of just made the box quite large. Personally, I like to add some uh, wrapping, uh, so we'll add some of that. Uh, that's quite short, so we'll make that a little bit bigger. Uh, Five twelve looks about about right. Uh, so when it gets to the edge of the box, it'll wrap round. And then I'm going to just change this to a little bit uh, different. Yeah, that's fine. And then I just want to add a little bit of padding just to the top of the dialog box, just to separate the character's name from uh, the actual dialog. Uh, so 16 should be fine. Okay, and the next thing I want to do on the main vertical box where the text is, I just want to add a little bit of padding onto that as well, just so it's not butting straight up to the, the edge there. Uh, okay, so that should be fine. Okay, and I think in terms of the sort of visuals, that's should be okay. I'm quite happy with that. So let's move on to the the main uh, sort of graph as it were. So with with this one we do need to add a few bits so Okay, yeah, so we've already got the inputs. Okay, so what we need to do first when we, sorry, yeah, so we're in the update dialog text uh, function. Uh, so what we want to do is get the op uh, so the options container. The first thing we want to do is actually clear uh, any of the children that are in there. So this is just clearing any of the previous option buttons that might be in there. So if there was one or two in there already, that'll get cleared out before it adds any any of the others uh, that we'll get to in a second. Uh, the next thing we want to do is add the text in for the speaker so we can add a reference uh, so drag that reference in and then we want to set the text uh, for it. And what we can do is just grab the input from the speaker so you can connect it like that or alternatively you can do the get uh, speaker and that should get the reference to the actual input it just makes it look a little bit tidier. Um, another thing that you can do uh, is do a bit of formatting on the on the text. So I'm going to add a colon at the end. I believe it's a colon. Uh, so if we pull from the in text on there, we can do format a text. Uh, and the format text is quite a quite a nice little little node. So if you put something in in the curly braces, like so, so let's say 2a, it adds it as an input. 
so you can change that to whatever you want it changes the input so I could change this to say speaker uh, so you can sort of see the inputs and you can add as many as you want so if we to have another one um, uh, more text yeah again you'll get another input for that uh, so what I'm going to do is just add the curly braces followed by speaker and then just uh, put a colon at the end so the speaker name will have a little bit of a colon at the end and then you just get the speaker name up uh, to the input like so um, the inputs themselves generally are wildcards so you can hook most things into them whether it's a string an integer so it's definitely a, a good a good note to get used to to using okay so the next thing I want to do is set the dialogue text so we can get a reference to that and we can set it I'm not wanting to do any formatting on the text with this one so I'm just going to pull from the in text and just get dialogue so this will be the input reference so as mentioned so that will be this one here so you can connect it like that if you want to okay so the next thing we want to do is actually create the options buttons uh, and place them within the the options container so you can pull from here and do a for each loop like so uh, or yet again optionally you can do the get options uh, text so create that that at the end and this time what we want to do is from the loop body is do create a widget and for the widget type you want to choose the dialog option that you selected so when you uh, choose that particular class you should then see the the four options pop up on the side if you're not getting those particular options you might just need to go into the options widget again and just double check to make sure that they are exposed on spawn and, and instance editable okay so with that done we can then get a reference to the options container and we want to add child and then we can just connect the return reference to the uh, the content there on the add child so what will happen here is it'll create the widget and then it'll add it to uh, the options container uh, because the this particular widget will already be visible uh, any of the children will automatically be made visible as well so we don't need to add to viewport or anything like that okay so the next thing we can do is just finish connecting some of these options so for the, from the array element we can just connect that straight up to the options text and then we have from the array index we can connect that up to the options index so if there's three options in there then the values will be 0, 1 and 2 and it will automatically assign those based on that array index uh, the next thing we need to do is the dialog index so we can just grab that from the input so I'm just going to do get dialog index and you do need to make sure it is the one that's under the variable section uh, if there's mul multiple so uh, move this over for a bit more room and then lastly we want to do the owning dialog component okay and for that we can just grab the reference that we've already got that's it So in terms of uh, the way this is laid out, I'm not too pleased that the owning dialog component is above everything else. So we'll see if we can move that below. Uh, no. So let's uh, stick it in a category, so let's call this uh, Uh, okay, yeah, so the dialog component, I've just put that in a category called dialog. So hopefully we'll be able to move that down. Oh, no. um, let's uh, drag these into the dialog as well. 
and then just make sure that's at the bottom. And we'll do a refresh. <coughs> there we go. So that's just sort of reordered them. Um, completely optional that step, so I do apologise for that. Um, well, yes, that just makes that look a little bit tidier. Right, so, and then for this, we can just do owning player. Right, so, okay, so um, I believe in terms of the main dialogue system, that itself should all be set up. So, yeah, so we've got the functions there, so the open conversation. Uh, so at this point, what we need to do is go ahead and uh, set up a, a quick system that will allow us to sort of trigger a conversation, and then we'll show you how to actually set up a conversation as well. Mm -hmm.